How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massabira Review is back with a little bit of Ghost Hawk up in this piece in the form of their Wayward Hellion. This be a Belgian Golden Style Ale. Coming in at a paltry 8.2% alcohol by volume. Yeah, this comes courtesy of my boy Christian. He uh, mailed off a bunch of, bunch of Ghost Hawk beers. He works there. Um, he sent them on his own accord. These are not from the brewery. I like to kind of point that out and go from there. And I'm super pumped for this for a couple different reasons. One, he says it's one of their... I think it, he said this is his favorite beer that they produce. And honestly, Belgian Golden Ale, do a lot of breweries really do that? A lot of breweries can. Belgian Golden Ales. I mean, it is COVID times, so you kind of have to do these kind of things. But kind of few and far between uh, when it comes to beers that breweries even brew. Um, they might do a Belgian kind of small Belgian beer, but you're talking about pushing 9%. Belgian Golden Ale, I'm pumped. Yeah, what else do we have going on here? Look at that. Likewise, it's cool. You know, a little spooky. A little spooky little label going on. And as far as Belgian Golden goes, it's essentially spot on. I mean, you got that soft little haze, not a ton of carbonation, nice kind of crumbly white head. Looks all the parts of a nice Belgian Golden Strong. See if you get a nose exactly what you'd expect although there is a little bit of some kind of spicy component that i got right towards the tail end i don't know what that is i assume it's some kind of hop um so when i think of belgian golden ale when i think of traditional belgian golden ale one of the things i think of is a crisp that green but yellow apple that's like one of the more kind of favorable components uh, they get of a lot of Belgian Goldens, albeit having drank a ton of Belgian Golden um, in the past several years, but it used to be one of my favorite styles. And I'm definitely getting that subtle crisp yellow apple kind of vibe off it. Nice sweetness to it. Um, there's a spiciness to it that, that's elevated beyond uh, a typical kind of malty or yeasty kind of spiciness you'd expect from a generic kind of Belgian phenolic. It's almost uh, like a combination of the nose from like a peppery kind of saison in combination with a very unique hop. Um, I'm not quite sure how it's going to play actually in the taste. It smells nice. It smells like it's going to be sweet, but not overly sweet. The way that yellow apple comes off every sniff, I gets a little bit sweeter. So it comes off a little bit candied yellow apple in a good way. And that spiciness, which I'm really curious about. Let's dive in. Cheers. That's delicious. Yeah. That is textbook Belgian Golden Ale right there. Like textbook. Textbook. And I don't mean it as like a, like a, a diss. Like, oh, they just made a generic Belgian Ale. It's kind of fucking hard to do it and do it right. And they did it here. That spicy thing that's big on the nose, it's there in the taste, but it's way smaller. So it kind of makes more sense. It is that kind of spicy peppery like uh cardamom coriander thing and you get every now and then in belgian goldens but more like belgian saison but it's there but it's not nearly as aggressive nose and lead you to believe that yellow apple is absolutely 100 percent like showing and proving throughout the whole beer it's not overly ripe it's not overly sweet even though the beer leans into sweetness it's not overly sweet and it's just crisp you know it, it's it's not that green apple kind of off flavory thing it's not that red delicious thing it's that nice yellow apple that i really do enjoy and for me is almost it's not like you have to have that um as part of the flavor profile for a belgian golden at least in my book but more often than not the ones that i really do enjoy tend to lean in that direction no heat whatsoever but you know you're drinking a big beer a little bit of bittering in the back, probably a little bit more aggressive, a skosh more aggressive than a traditional Belgian um, golden. But again, it's microns bigger, so I'm not going to sit here and say it's out of style. Not that I do that kind of shit. Anyway, I really like this. I mean, I'm going to first things first, full disclosure. It's been a long time since I've had a Belgian golden like this. I think I've reviewed. I did one of our, my um, my online bottle shares for the channel. And I believe we did uh, Tremens. Um, which I guess Belgian strong, Belgian golden ale, kind of flirt in the area. Even I think we might have to Duvel. I forget. I guess you're kind of getting in that area, but this is more of that kind of. You know what this reminds me of, and I could be wrong, <laughs> but a knee jerk reaction makes me say Hentanker Lucifer. 
that's what I'm thinking of when I'm thinking of this beer. That's a good thing. It's one of my favorite beers. I haven't had it. I don't know why I'm clacking my f finger like an asshole. Um, I haven't had that beer in years. Probably five years plus. Probably longer. Um, it reminds me of that. And that's uber traditional mindset. That's a like kind of Merriam-Webster dictionary level Belgian golden nail. Belgian golden strong Belgian golden nail. I like this. I think it's fantastic. In a sea of hazies. And I'm not that guy. I'm not going to fuck dump on hazies. I love me hazies. I love me pastry. I love all that shit. But I love traditional styles too. But, you know, you're talking about a brewery that's relatively new. It's trying to do good. And they are making hazies. And they are making stouts. But you're seeing export stouts. You're seeing Pilsner. You're seeing Lager. You're seeing Belgian Gold Nail. It just warms the cockles of my heart. It makes me absolutely fucking happy. Not just that they make them, but they make them like this. This is great. Thank you very much, Christian, sending this off. This is absolutely fantastic. And I understand why you like this beer so much. Granted, you're young. I can drink one of these, half of these, and I'm done. Um, you're probably throwing back fucking four packs of this like it's nobody's business. But, um, yeah, tasty AF. And just absolutely good beer. Absolutely good beer. One of the better Belgian golden ales I've had as of late. Yeah, it's defaults to number one because I can't remember the last one I actually did. Um, but let's say I had a bunch. I think it would be up there. Like I said, the first thing I'm going to do after this is I'm going to look up my review of Lucifer um, and just look up general Belgian golden strongs. I think this is kind of up there. Uh, valued availability, no idea. Christian, let me uh, let me know what's what and leave you with if you like what we like this beer. If you like Belgian beers. Yeah. But you want... And I, let me put a pause button there. This is about uber traditional, minus that little tick of that bittering at the end, which I'm, I'm not trying to say that takes it out of original status. But this is probably one of the more original tasting. Like, when I say original tasting, it tastes like a beer that would come from Belgium, um, as opposed to an American brewery making a Belgian beer. It's it's one it, few breweries do that. King can pull that off, um, you know. Uh, fucking um, Schlafly can pull it off. Um, what's the one out west that I want to talk about? God, Ex Novo? No, it's not Ex Novo. It's one that makes figgy pudding. Anyway, there's certain breweries that really uh, barrel souls in Florida. There's certain breweries that can really pull off that kind of Belgian vibe, um, and this is it. And that's kind of hard to do. So, yeah. If you like Belgian beers, if you like them, well done. You like gold nails. There you go. So hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out in the social media stuff. Beer Massive podcasting stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little, uh, yeah, a little ghost talk right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers.